Hi, I'm Mauri Katarina, and I deep clean my followers' homes for free. And today, look at this beautiful, beautiful kitchen. It is so dirty, delicious, and I want to clean it so bad. But I'm not only going to clean. Today I will teach you all of the most important cleaning hacks that you need. But one thing you can see on the video is the smell. It's awful. I mean awful. <laughs> but it's okay. I can deal with it. But that's not all. Because I named this home Dust Dungeon. And soon you will see why. Oh, can you see the sink? It is filled with rotten food. Look, oh my god, that's perfect. The bathroom was filled with clothes and dust. But this isn't the dust I mean. The house owner had to use walker, so it's really good that we are cleaning here. Dust everywhere, but wait until you see this. <laughs> I have never ever seen this much dust in my life and it looks so amazing. Oh my gosh. Okay, I think we have to change the name. This is dust heaven. Literally dust heaven. <laughs> Whoa. Coming up in this video. Like I said, you may have seen me clean. But this time, I will explain my techniques to you. Let's empty this counter, so we can clean it, scrub it and wash it. Mm, yes! Really soon, I'll introduce you the most important tool of a professional cleaner. A microfiber cloth and how to use it right. Here we have different kind of stains. I can already see some food stains, some grease stains, something purple. Hmm, that's interesting. Some flour and some crumbs. I almost always use dish soap to see what it removes. So let's do that first with a scrub mummy. I often get asked what's the difference between scrub mommy and scrub daddy. Scrub daddy is a sponge-like texture, but scrub mommy also has this kind of soft side. Circular motions creates the most foam. This is a scraper. It is a really sharp, but from flat surface you can remove anything with it. It can scratch the surface if you don't use it right. The right way is to use it in a slight angle. In this case, dish soap and water have softened the stains so it's really easy to scrape them off. Now I will tell you how to use a microfiber cloth. First of all, the cloth needs to be damp but not wet. It should not leave any water on the surface. Like here, it doesn't drop any water. Fold the cloth on half and then half again. Then you will have eight clean sides to it. It fits to my hand perfectly, like this. Always wipe with the fold forward. When you are wiping, just fold the cloth and it's clean. Let me show you in real life. First, wipe as long as you can, and then make a fold. Now, fold it, and then surface of the cloth is clean again. Repeat. This way you can use the same cloth longer and therefore clean faster. Fold it again, and it's clean. But that's not all. Also, the result will be always clean, because the dirt won't spread when you fold the cloth right. Fold and repeat. Fold. 
Ford fold and we have used half of the cloth. Look. There's dirty side and clean side. Folding the cloth is like sport and the more you practice, the better you will get. When I started cleaning, I just folded the cloth any way I felt like because I did it no better. That's why I encourage you to practice and you will see the results. Let's do an experiment. Let's have this table and use two different kind of products, chlorine and power paste. Here I'm using first chlorine with this side. I'm spreading the chlorine and then I'll let it sit there for a while. Then for the other side I'm using power paste. Power paste works straight away even though it's a bit harder to use it, but it's the eco-friendly option. It needs more scrubbing. Scrub, scrub, scrub! And then I wipe it clean. Remember to fold the cloth. <laughs> yes, like that. Chlorine doesn't need to be scrubbed that much since it has already worked its magic. To zoom up, there are many ways and detergents that work. As a cleaner, I try to show you as many possible ways. Now the table is clean and the both products work really well. Okay, let's move on. I want to show this to you first, because look at that. It looks so beautiful. Again, let's start by emptying this counter. Then let's wash the sink and the dishes. Oh, those flowers were pretty sad. Look at these utensils. They are covered in rotten food. And so is the sink. First, I'm removing all the rotten residue. Since this is rotten food, I'm using farming bleach because it kills all the bacteria. Remember, you should never use chlorine with hot water since it evaporates and it's really dangerous to inhale. I spread the chlorine on the whole surface with a scrub mummy and let it sit there for a while. Then I'll take a steel daddy and scrub the rotten food off. Steel daddy is a sponge with steel wire so it's really handy in removing hard stains. Then this tab. As you can see, the little crevices have a lot of dirt. I'll start with chlorine and steel daddy, because it can reach all the crevices. Let's see, did it work? Ooh. Yes, it did! <laughs> but I'm not happy yet. Then I'm using power paste. If you have tried power paste on your sink, you may have noticed that it not only polishes your sink, it also removes black color. It's totally natural. The steel oxidizes in time and getting darker, so it's totally normal. Here, as you can see, the power paste is like clay, so it needs to be rinsed off well. But after that, the result is amazing. Let's move on. <laughs> On. Now I'll tell you why I'm using plastic wrap. In oven, stoves like this and bottom of... Whoa, what is that? <laughs> bottom of pans there is always some burnt food and it needs a highly alkaline product. For example, oven cleaner. So why do we need the plastic wrap? Since otherwise the oven cleaner would dry up on the surface 
and stays need some moisture so they get softer. Think about a dried up slice of cucumber. If you put water on it, in a few minutes it will have softened. And then it will come right off the surface. In this case, we need effective product and a lot of time. But after a time, all the burnt residue has melted away. Next, I'm using Steel Daddy. It will scrape off any leftover residue. Without this and a scraper, there would be some burnt marks left. But remember, always use plastic wrap. Never use aluminum folio, since foil and oven cleaner can cause chemical burns. This method is great for stoves, ovens, bottom of pans and pots. If you have an induction stove, you can just scrape it clean. Okay, there's still something left, so I'm gonna scrape it off gently. Now it looks good. Last but not least, I'm adding stove polisher. This protects the stove and removes rust and now it looks so much better. Okay, next. Dried up grease can be tough. But if the surface is flat like these tiles, it will be really easy to remove. First, I'm softening the crease with dish soap and then I'm using a scraper. Super easy! Look at that! You can scrape almost any flat surface. And no, scraping does not scratch the surface. You can first try it on a small area, so you will see. Again, here's a time technique. Can you see how the first round of this scrubbing does nothing? The idea is to spread the soap on the surface. Let it affect a while and then scrub it again. Few minutes later, round two. And voila, now the burnt food comes off really easy. Usually people give up straight away if the dirt doesn't come off. But it just needs some time, so remember to wait. I always wipe the surface with a clean cloth that has no detergent on it. The less there is detergent left on the surface, the cleaner it will stay. Detergent always leaves a film on the surface, and dirt will easily get stuck to it. Now you will see some amazing dusting. A duster is a crate for dusting. There are two types of dusters. Some collect the dust and some just drop or remove the dust. The ones that collect dust are made of microfiber or lamp wool. And the ones that just remove or drop it are often made with ostrich feathers. Here I'm using a lamp wool duster, but since there is so much of dust, it just drop it. Let me just tell you that after this, I was fully covered in dust. <laughs> it was like a lovely dust train. This fridge door has some random stains. I think that's some kind of food, some grease, so that's why I'm using dish soap. First I scrub it on the surface and then I'll scrub it again and again and then I just wipe it clean. Easy.
Okay, let's clean this sink area, I guess. <laughs> I think there is a really bad stains under all that stuff, but let's see. I almost always use dish soap to see what it removes. So let's do that first. Circular motions make dish soap foam and that's why I do it. Let's see if we have some stains left after this. Then I decide what detergents I will use. Hmm. There is definitely something left on there. Yep. As you can see, the steel has some coffee oil stains. That brown or orange thing. It's only coffee oil. It's not rust. That's why I'm using chlorine, since it removes coffee oil most effectively. First, just spread it. Then let it affect and then scrub it again. And voila, deep cleaning is done. Did you know that you can remove the bottom from your toaster? Well, now you do. Again, I'm using dish soap and spreading it on the toaster. I'm not scrubbing it too much on this first round. Because, again, I want to make the stain softer. Okay, some tapping. Woo! Crumbs! Now the second round with steel daddy, because it removes everything. I'm using it really gently so it only removes dried food. Then just wipe it clean. First just spread it, then give it a time, then scrub it again and then wipe it clean. Then just put this back and it's time to clean another machine. Many times for the stainless steel I use power paste. As I said power paste is like clay that also rubs the dirt off. But that's not all. It also polishes the steel. Steel that it removes any leftover stains. I always use Steel Daddy gently on steel. I often use dish soap with it so that glide is better. Now the steel is really clear and like new. Okay, here is a mug with coffee oil stains. It can be removed with dishwasher tablets or chlorine. I'm using a bit of chlorine and cold water and letting it affect. A couple hours later the stains have melted, but I'm still giving the cup a good scrubbing. This coffee machine was full of mold and dried up coffee. Mmm, yummy! Wow, mold smoke! <laughs> so, again I'm using chlorine. It removes grease and kills all the bacteria. The most important task for a professional cleaner is to identify what kind of dirt we are dealing with. 
So in this case coffee oil, mold and the surface was glass. So I need to know what kind of detergent will work on the stains and it's suitable for the surface. Usually the problem is that people don't know which detergent to use or what is that stain. So that's why I'm helping you. Because in cleaning school we learned about different stains, different chemicals and different surfaces and which one you can combine. As you can see I'm letting the chlorine affect on the pan and on this machine and now it has affect there so it's really easy to wipe it clean. There was still some burnt coffee left so I am scraping it off. Now I'm pretty sure that the coffee oil has melted all the way. So here I'm using a little bit of steel daddy and dish brush. And then final rinsing. And as you can see, it's clear. Now you can make a cup of coffee. Do -do 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 -do. Here comes Scrap Daddy's dish wand. Woohoo! The end is a Scrap Daddy sponge, but you can pour dish soap inside the wand. It will come out of Daddy's mouth when you press the button. Here you can see without the head how it's working. And now let's use it. Circular motions and foaming. Ooh. <laughs> A lot of dust. But I'm sure that Dish Daddy only loves it. I noticed that there was a bit of dried grease, so I scrape it off. If your stove glass is really bad and there is a lot of grease, I recommend to use oven cleaner. Wash it one time with oven cleaner and then it's really easy to keep it clean. Then I just wipe it clean with microfiber cloth and now you can see through. Vertical surface. First spreading, then just waiting. I decided to use steel that it is time. But be careful not to press too hard since it can scratch the surface if not use it right. So always start gentle and work your way up. Let's see what dish soap and power paste can do together. Yes, it feels really easy to clean with these two. Why won't I vacuum? Because it would get full and clogged all the time. Vacuuming also leaves the dust in the air and it's much narrower than a squeaky. By the way, I have to say that this floor was made from plastic. It looks like wood, but it's not. That's why I pour the water on it. 
In my home, I use a microfiber cloth with my squeegee, so the vacuuming and mopping happens at the same time. Clever! I'm saving time, which makes cleaning even more fun. It's satisfying when you can get a lot done in a short amount of time. This floor had some dried food stains, so that's why I was scraping them off. Here I'm washing the floor with a flat mop. I've tried to find a similar product on Amazon, but I couldn't. Can you see how the color of the floor has changed? Nice! Lastly, I'm wiping the floor with a towel. With this towel, I'm using the same folding technique. With my squeegee, I fold the towel ahead, like that, so the part of the towel is clean. It's so much faster and more hygienic than using a regular mop, when you use the same part of the mop on the whole floor. This floor had a lot of dirt and grime, so I'm using Steel Daddy and dish soap. Let's rinse it and see what we have left. For the grout, I'm using a dish brush. If you have really stained grout, I suggest to use vinegar, steel daddy and a dish brush. The rest of the stains I'm removing with power paste. In damp spaces, the dust is usually stuck on the surface, since the moisture weights it down. That's why I won't use a duster or microfiber cloth on its own. I rinse the dust or I'm washing the dust off. Woohoo, lime scale! Many people wonder how they could get rid of lime scale. With a scraper, of course! And it's super easy. Here I'm not using any detergent, just scraping it all off. You can use vinegar, but it hardly never works without a hard tool, like steel daddy or scraper. So always have your hard tools ready when removing lime scale. So this drain is stainless steel, so that's why I'm polishing it with power paste. This light switch had some sort of sticky residue on it. Power paste will do the job. It washes and rubs the dirt off. On and off, on and off. Oh my god, there's some stains left under the switch. Oh my god, no! Why can't I see that? Oh, I'm wiping it off. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Good! Here is some knowledge about soap. If you have soap residue, you need to use stronger detergent than soap. For hand soap, use dish soap. 
the stronger detergent will melt the other one away. I love foam, even though it has no like mm, real purpose in cleaning. But with the foam, you can see if you have spread the soap on the whole surface. And the foam keeps the detergents on place. But also, that being said, the foam can be hard to wipe it off. I also clean the toilet with dish soap and with the scour daddy and I'm throwing the scour daddy after this cleaning away. Inside the bowl I use liquid dishwasher detergent. Let's see what it removes. Mm, pretty good I think. Flushing or rinsing I would say. <laughs> Then I'm scraping the lime scale off and then I flush it and now it's clean. Multi-surface cleaner smells amazing, amazing, amazing. And it removes grease and softens stains. And let's remember the folding. Fold and go. Did you miss any tip or trick? Please let me know in comments if you did. I hope you liked the video, because I did. And this house owner was really thankful when she came home. But now I'm on my way to the next dirty home. See you then. Bye bye.